And now, Casino Royale. Welcome back to They Call Me Uncle. Today, we explore the origins of everyone's favorite ultra-functional alcoholic. That lost hand nearly killed me. The man known only as Bond. James Bond. Today, we count down every version of Bond's debut story. Casino Royale, Ian Fleming's first Bond novel published in 1953. We watched all three films, including the lesser-known 1954 Climax Theater version and the 1967 Casino Royale, where things like this happen. We're introduced to Agent 007 on Her Majesty's Secret Service with a license to kill. And naturally, very little concern for human life. Especially if it's female. Let's be honest. Trust me, I wish it wasn't the case. For the first of many times, yeah, yeah. Bond gets his marching orders from the mysterious M. I'll call you back. I can be Agent M. Uh, Dead no, you. the I other one. was a randomly assigned letter. I had no idea it stood for Utter one more syllable and I'll have you killed. We meet the world's first Bond girl, Vesper Lynn, who made her debut and subsequent exit in every version. Vesper, do you think Tremble could be a double agent? Vesper? He has enough trouble being a single agent. Felix Leiter, the reminder that the CIA still exists in Bond's world. They're just a lot lamer than him. The dubious Frenchman, Rene Mathis, who does little more than be French and dubious. Miss Moneypenny, M's secretary, makes her first appearance in the novel as well. And she makes a very teeny tiny glimpse in one of the film versions. Actually, I'm Miss Moneypenny's daughter. Le Chiffre, also known as the cipher or the number, is the main villain in the novel and all three film adaptations. Le Chiffre speaking. Unless you count Peter Sellers. He was apparently an awful person. We also come face to face with the adorably named Smirsh, the counterintelligence agency whose name in Russian means death to spies. We must destroy. Bond's first mission is to find Le Chief and defeat him in high stakes poker at the titular Casino Royale. Thus putting him deep in debt with his evil clients and forcing him to defect goes about as well as you think. Le Chief, being a total sends his men to kill Bond before the game even starts, which ends up being totally unnecessary because Bond sucks at poker and loses in the first round. Enter Felix Leiter, who, like any good enabler, offers Bond the funds he needs to buy his way back in. Le Chief, continuing to be a total b attempts to kill Bond again even as they're playing, which doesn't stop Bond's inevitable victory. Bond intends to celebrate his win with Vesper Lynn, Bam Chica Wah Wah, only to be captured and tortured in wildly different ways, ranging from off camera toenail pulling to horrible ball smashing. Since Bond has pretty much failed every objective up to this point, the writers had to think of a way for him to survive and have his torture interrupted by Smirsh, who execute Le Chief for his failures, but inexplicably leave Bond alive. Following the surprise twist that Vesper Lin has been blackmailed into working for the enemy and sold her soul in exchange for Bond's life, she is either killed or commits suicide, or whatever this is. Seven James Bonds at Casino Royale They came to save the world and win a gal at Casino Royale Six of them went to a heavenly spot The seventh one is going to a place where it's terribly hot We rank the three films based on their loyalty to Fleming's novel with a total of 40 possible points Coming in third with a score of 20 The Climax Theatre's Casino Royale from 1954 which looks like the middle school play you only went to because your cousin was in it. Coming in second with a score of 30, Casino Royale from 1967. One of the trippiest movies we have ever reviewed for TCMU. And we've seen Wizards. A futuristic fantasy epic. Coming in at number one with 32 out of 40, Casino Royale from 2006 which introduced the world at large to parkour and Ava Green. 
we're much more grateful for one than the other. As always, thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.